Um, my name is Christian Fredriksson. Uh, we have two Christians here today to have some redundancy. <laughs> Always good. Um, especially when we talk about hardware. And I am a consultant and trainer with We Are Movement and also have my own, co own uh, company since a few years ago. I've uh, been working as an adult coach for about 10 years or something. Uh, quite a lot of our time working with hardware and uh, especially with companies that are either in the automotive industry or building other kind of products where the customer is in the automotive industry in some way. So I'm going to talk about today why Agile for hardware might be harder, but maybe not in the way we think, but maybe in a more soft way. Uh, I have another QR code here. I will show that again in the end. It's not for the questions, it's just for my LinkedIn profile if you want to get in touch with me. 47% um, of agile transformations fail. This was a statement that uh, Jeff Sutherland put in a, in a PowerPoint presentation uh, that he did for um, uh, Agile India, I think it was two years ago. Uh, and 67% of those failures are terminal. And this was initial, initially, originally um, a statement from Forbes and uh, Sloan Management Review. And we might think that if 47% of agile transformations fail, and we are working with hardware, is it more likely or less likely that we will fail when we work with hardware? Because agile for har hardware seems to be a bit harder. Uh, we see that feedback loops are naturally longer when we work with hardware. Uh, they are more expensive, and it's more expensive to make them shorter. Uh, we need to have a lot of specialized skills in, in hardware development that make it quite a bit uh, more difficult to build cross-functional teams. We have a lot of dependencies, and those dependencies might drive uh, the need to plan more ahead because they need to deliver something, they have long lead times, and then they are trying to integrate that with something that someone else is building. So that drives the need to build longer and more detailed plans for some reason. And when we try to build cross-functional teams that we want to we want to decentralize the decision making, we might find that when we just do that, it will lead to sub-optimization because we have this problem of how can we get an overview? How do we make sure that the decisions we make in the teams make the product better as a whole and not just for that part of the product that the team is, is doing in a quite large organization, etc., etc. So does this mean that if we do an agile transformation in hardware development that we are doomed to fail? It doesn't necessarily have to be so. First of all, the gains in hardware development from agile is quite high. It might even be higher than for software development. Just think about what is the cost of change when you have changes that occur late in, in, in the programs for the product development you do. You need to change the hardware. You need to go to the suppliers and change things. Th those costs could be astronomous. So if we can reduce those costs, that is quite valuable. We also have another benefit when doing hardware development, and that is that engineers that are doing hardware development are usually already trained in scientific, uh, scientific thinking. That is part of the way they work. So, so it's easy for them to understand, usually, uh, agile thinking that is based on scientific thinking. So we are used to, to validate hypotheses and also to think about trade-offs, even though those trade-offs might occur too late, so they will be too costly but thinking that way. And also, at least those experienced with, with production environments um, and, and production uh, are usually quite familiar with lean thinking, which is also a benefit in this case, as Agile is very much like a cousin to lean thinking. And we use lean thinking also when trying to create agility in hardware development. And finally, it is possible to overcome some of the problems with, with Agile in hardware development. We can invest to make it cheaper and safer and faster to change things. The things that, that Friedrich was mentioning before regarding 
uh, Tesla, how they think. But still, we might go into trying to get agility in our hardware context and, and see some patterns of failure where things doesn't go as we want it to. We might get overwhelmed by, we think that, oh, we just need to, set, to change everything and it will take six years. How should we address this problem? And then we might try to use our old thinking to build a long plan and, and to think, think that we can predict the outcome of this uh, over a long time and just by changing everything. We might also lack, lack a connection to our current context. Not, not thinking about agility in terms of kind of a, some uh, theoretical thing that we want to build, but also to be able to connect it to what are the problems we see in our organization, what are keeping the management team uh, not able to sleep at night. And when we don't see the, the quick wins, when we don't see the gains soon enough, we might feel that we, we, lack, we, lack, uh, we lose confidence in this. And we might also see that the organizational immune system starts to fight back and, and want to do it in the old, in the old way we, we do things here. And this might also lead to that we start blaming management. Oh, it's them. They need to change their mindset. They, they, they don't have the right mindset. We need to change management. And the, the essence of this is that we use the same kind of thinking that made us successful in the past when we try to build something new. Because we have invested so heavily in our ability to extract and exploit value, that is what made us successful probably as a company. And from what we already know, we have built some knowledge and are able to make that more efficient and create a lot of value out of it. So you, that is why I, I put a picture here. It might not be so easy to see for you in the room here, but uh, that is a gold mine in the, in the background here. And that represents that when we have been able to, first we are the gold diggers, we, we find gold. But when we have found the, find the gold, found the gold, then we become gold miners. And usually our companies that are good at product development, we have become gold miners. We have been able to create a mine and make that very efficient. But then what happens is that the market dynamic is changing. New players come in. The barrier to enter the new the product development market that we are in becomes lower and new players emerge. And then we have to become gold diggers again. So how do we do that? Then we come into the soft issues. Because doing a change like this is, means that we need to create new organizational abilities. We need to change behavior patterns. And that can be hard, hard to, to overcome. And then we run into a lot of soft issues that might give us those um, uh, failure patterns I, I mentioned before. So what can we do about it? Uh, how can we uh, build this ability to, thr to thrive in this environment? And first of all, it's about enabling new, uh, new abilities. We need to explore and learn, just like Tesla. Uh, we need to find and remove the impediments to agility that are there in the organizations. But we can't do that before if, if we don't see it. That's why it can, can be so important also to to, uh, to measure everything, like, like Frederick mentioned before. And we need to invest in what enables agility. Uh, that can be quite uh, expensive, but if we look at the value of being fast, that, that is what is important. What is the cost of not being fast, and what is the value of being fast? And some agile, agile enablers for hardware. I don't won't go through those because uh, Frederick order, already mentioned them before, most of them. Uh, but that could be something to invest in to become faster. But we also need to, we, we need this ability to thrive in complexity. That it is our new environment where we, we need to be better in than our order environment that we were used to before when we were gold miners instead of gold diggers. And we need to do that without throwing away what made us successful in the past. Because it's all about context. Those efficiencies that we made, that made us successful, though that, that ability is still useful. 
and our new abilities we want to build to become agile, that is useful. But it all depends on what context we are talking about. We apply the gold uh, digging um, abilities in the complex context, in the uh, context where we need to find new gold. And we apply the traditional uh, uh, mindset we used when, when we were gold miners to make things more efficient in that context. And those can exist simultaneously, and we need to be very aware of what context we are in. So we just don't try to apply the thinking for the one, one thing on the other, uh, and doing it opposite the, the way I presented here. We also need to have a sense of direction. Uh, and that is difficult, because we are so used to trying to predict the outcome of things. We want to predict, uh, we make a plan, and we want to predict what is, will the outcome of this agile transformation be. But we can't plan all steps in ahead when we are in a complex environment. But that doesn't mean that we still do, doesn't need a, um, don't need a sense of direction. We need to know why we're doing this. What, how do we know if things are, are better? But when we see that, that is very clear to us. Then we can do incremental steps. We change something, we do something, we do the next right thing. And then we, we observe and we reflect. And finally, I see a lot of leaders and change uh, agents here in the room tonight. And you can think about yourself as, as being gardeners. Think about the complexity you are in the organization. That the water will always take the easiest route. So in order to make things change in the direction you want to go, you need to change the environment so to make it easier for the water to flow in the direction you want it to flow. You also need to create support structures so that it will be easier and, and more safe for people to change. So that when things fail, because they will inevitably fail sometimes, that it's safe to fail. And finally, you need to give each other space to grow, just like the beautiful flowers in the garden. And that doesn't exclude management. You need to make it, give them space to grow as well. Don't just blame them for not being agile. What can you change in the environment to make it easy for them to do the next right thing tomorrow as well? Okay, thanks for listening.